Good morning, church. Yeah, good morning. Two of y'all are up. Good morning, everybody. What's up with that? Come on. Yeah, yeah, see, there we go. This is the best good morning section right there. <laughs> Welcome, y'all. My name is Chad Ware. Honor, privilege to be here uh, to give the message this morning. Um, you know, it's a great day, as I always say, to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, and uh, to be with you folks uh, is a blessing all the time. Uh, but it's back to school, right, in the area. Elkin starts tomorrow, I think, right? Maybe a couple of counties started last week. Right? So we want to make sure we're praying over, over the school year. Sports seasons are underway. I watched the girls' soccer team here at Elkins a little bit yesterday. They look pretty good. Uh, I think they scrimmaged Bridgeport maybe to a tie, so that, that was a good start for them in that scrimmage. Uh, some of my football boys are back there this morning, which makes the heart feel good. Uh, so it's a good morning. But we got to get loose because some of y'all ain't loose yet, and I can see it. All right, so here's what I want y'all to do. If you can, I want you to stand up. Go ahead, stand up. Come on. I know, look, Debbie just, listen, my wife just read me a whole list of things not to do, especially if there's first-time visitors, right? Don't have them stand up, don't have them engaged, don't do that, but I can't help it. Y'all, you know how I am. All right, so we're going to stand up and do two claps today, because I think you get more energy getting two claps in, right? So two claps again, remember I say two claps, you're just like that, okay? So you guys ready for that? It's not on the spot. All right, ready? Two claps, two claps, two claps. Can I get an amen? All right, have a seat, y'all. Good, we're getting ready to go. Ah, get your minds right this morning, get your bodies right, and get after it. That gone it. Debbie's right. I have trouble turning off the coach in me, uh, but that's all right. We had our first scrimmage yesterday. I got home. I finished this message last night at 1030, grabbed dinner at some point, passed out, and then woke up, and I don't even know if I slept last night. It doesn't feel like it, but uh, man, I am glad to be here today. All right, so I want you to repeat after me. Say, I am... A child of God. I am a conqueror in all things. I am an overcomer. I am blessed and highly favored. And I am powerful in the Lord. Two claps. So the title of today's message, y'all, is Authority and Power. And I don't have any slides back there because I was a slacker, didn't get any to Mandy. Uh, but I'm old school anyways, right? Y'all know I use the notes and, and, and that kind of thing. But that's okay. We just kick it back a few years. But we're going to deal today with the subject of power and authority uh, of Jesus Christ that's been given to us and the significance of living in that power and authority. I mean, everybody in here wants that, right? I mean, we see time and time again Christians that'll come to church year after year and, and, and time after time, and they, they never walk in the God-given power and authority that they have. And so uh, as this football season is upon us, I can't help but think about power, right, and how, how the game should be played with energy and physicality and passion. And uh, so we're right here with authority and power because up until 7.30 last night, I was going to talk about patience today. Yeah, fooled my wife there. She thought that that's where we were heading, but it, it's authority and power. But Jesus made the promise to give us this power and authority in Matthew 16, 18, when he said to Peter, the gates of hell will not be able to withstand or withhold the advancing church. Jesus is going to build his church. The church was going to advance. The gates of hell could not withstand it. Jesus is saying that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. His power is greater than the power of the enemy. When there is a head-on conflict between the power of the enemy and the power of God, you can guess what? The power of the enemy will lose every single time. It cannot stand. You see, God is unbeaten, y'all. He is untied. It ain't never been close. It's over before it starts. That's the power of God. That's what resides within everyone in here today. But how do you live and walk with the power and the authority of God? Paul's statement in 1 Corinthians 4, 19 through 20 says, But I will come to you very soon, if the Lord is willing. And then I will find out not only how these arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. For the kingdom of God is not a, a matter of talk, but of power. You see, talk is cheap. It's just talk. It's just useless chatter. It's something that comes out and blows away in the wind, but the kingdom of God is about power. And I want you all to grasp that today. As you're sitting there, I want you to think about the power of God, the authority in which you have. You see, in that passage, Paul says that he's coming to Corinth to see the teachers that are there. He's not coming to hear their words, but he's coming to see the power that is active in their lives. For the kingdom of God is not words, but it is power. Say power. Say power again like you mean it. Power. 
Good, 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 good. Man, y'all are hyped this morning. I like that. Feeds me. It's when you arrive to a place when you begin to understand God's power. It's when you begin to walk in freedom. When you begin to walk in understanding. That confusion has no hold on your life any longer. Only truth and godly wisdom has space to exist. You know, in the past, as I mentioned, I walked many years before. I I knew God, but didn't live for God. But in the past, I'd given myself to the Lord through his word, right? But I hadn't fully grasped his power. You know, how do you read the word of God? You know, do you read the word of God and hear it like a field mouse is speaking to you? Or do you hear it as if a mighty God is on the throne who has given you everything and is speaking to you through his word? You see, there are so many of us that are pushovers for the enemy. We bow down to fear. We bow down to pressure. We shut down due to distraction. We crawl when we should be walking. We lay down when we should be rising up. See, today my hope is that when you leave this church today, that you walk in your godly authority and you grasp your godly power that has been given to you through your salvation. See, I want you to know that your Christian walk should be characterized by power of Jesus, the power of the Almighty at all times, just not part of the time. Not just when you feel good, not just when things are going great, but each and every day, every minute, every hour, That's what you possess inside of you. It is a lion, y'all, and it ain't backing down from anybody. As Proverbs 30, 30 says, a lion mighty among beasts who retreats before nothing. That's what resides in you this morning. And I want you to feel that. I want you to grasp that. I want you to know that and have that knowledge. Paul says in Ephesians 1, 19, I pray that you'll begin to understand the incredible greatness of his power. And that is my prayer as I stand here today with you guys, that you will have the understanding of God's incredible power that you no longer have to back up, that you no longer have to retreat, that you no longer have to to crawl into a hole and just cower, that you have the power to stand up and do what you need to do in the glory and honor of Christ. You're proud of that word. Paul says, I pray that a spirit of wisdom and revelation will be given to you. I also pray that revelation happens today and that you'll begin to understand the incredible greatness of his power for those of us who believe. Say, I believe. Say, I believe. believe. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. Got to get churchy once in a while in here. Get too too narrow. You see, belief, if y'all don't know, is a powerful thing. You know, why do you think the enemy works so hard to derail that belief? To make you doubt your abilities. To make you doubt the word. To make you doubt the authority and the power you have in your life. And ultimately, to doubt God. Belief begins... Uh, to bring bring great power into your life. When you believe, things begin to change. Later on in Ephesians 1, Paul says that the power at work in you is the very power that raised Jesus from the dead. Think on that for a moment. That power that resides in you is the same power that brought Jesus back from the dead. That when he ascended to heaven, he left for us the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the helper, the comforter. That resides in you. That, y'all, should be a powerful thing to think about for you. Let that go from your head to your heart today. You know, how many of us have ever really thought of our bodies being vessels that carry the power of God? That very power, again, that raised Jesus from the dead. Say this with me. The power, power. and we're going to start it over, okay? Because listen, y'all, y'all got voices, and y'all got voices that you can lift to the Lord. And that's what we're doing today. We're lifting our voices to the Lord. Okay, say it again. The power. Oh, y'all ahead of me. I like that. <laughs> that raised Jesus, that raised Jesus. From, death from death resides in me. Resides in How many of us need revelation to understand what it truly means? Amen. How many of us ask, do I need more power? Who keeps us from a life of God's power? It's not the need to get more power, but instead is what we need, a release of the power we've already been given to us by Jesus through our salvation. It's already been given to you by your salvation. But what stops that power from being released in our life? You know, here's the deal, y'all. We cannot speak in God's authority when we are not living under his authority. See, when we aren't being obedient, we don't know what he says. If we're not living in the word... We don't know what he says. See, Jesus on earth himself, he lived underneath the Father's authority. Jesus said that there was nothing he said or did that he had not first heard from his Father. 
In other words, Jesus lived under the authority of his heavenly father, underneath the king, underneath God. Jesus himself submitted to authority. John 5.30 says, But I do nothing without consulting the Father. I do just as I'm told. My judgment is absolutely just because it is according to the will of God who sent me. It is not merely my own. Jesus did only what he saw and heard from the Father. That unleashed great power in the Lord. See, the, the reason Jesus' power is released and available so much more in the Gospels than it is for us, that Jesus was sensitive to make sure that everything he did and said was in obedience to the Father. And check your heart this morning. How are you living your life? Are you living under authority of the king? Or are you living under the authority of man? How do you live your life daily? See, we should all be examining ourselves daily and asking the questions. Do I have independence in my life? Do I lack any submission anywhere? Am I practicing rebellion anywhere? Jesus understood how important it is that he did not allow rebellion into his life. He knew the way to power. This is the God map to the way of power. But too many times, this stays back here, and it should be in the front. I like that right there. You see, Jesus spoke under God's authority, and we got to be sensitive that we're living in a proper and right relationship in alignment with God's authority. So we'll be able to access that for ourselves here on earth. See, things can be off, and we might not know why. Maybe sometimes we got to check how we're living, check how we're talking, check our sources. Are we walking upright with the Lord, or are you walking on your own path? Again, we have the very power inside of us that raised Jesus from the dead. There's a difference between authority and power. See, authority is the capacity that we have due to our position, You see, I, we have the authority of God in us due to our relationship with Jesus Christ through our salvation, right? You got it. If you've been saved, you got your salvation. We're going to go through that later. But you got it. Power is the capacity you have due to your life posture with Jesus. Where's your heart at? What's it turned to? What are you facing? See, a good example of this can be found in the beginning of Luke 9 where Jesus had given his authority and power to the 12 disciples. And they went out and they did amazing, miraculous signs and wonders. A little bit farther in the chapter, Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. A man comes to his other disciples that are down below and he says, Will you heal my son for he's caught up in these seizures by demonic activity? They weren't able to heal him. And when Jesus comes down off the Mount of Transfiguration, the man comes up to him and says, Hey, I asked your disciples, I don't know if he said that, I'm kind of paraphrasing this, but I asked your disciples if they'd heal my son and they couldn't. Will you? What Jesus do? Healed his son. Now, was it God's will for his son to be healed? Absolutely, yes. Had disciples received authority to do that? They had. Why was the power not released for it to happen? Well, that was the question the disciples had, right? They asked Jesus, why weren't we able to heal him? And Jesus said, this kind comes out by prayer. And I thought about that. I don't really know what Jesus meant necessarily in that response, but here's what I think it means. And you won't hear me stand up here very much and saying, give my opinion and I think and all that. But but this is what I think it means. I think Jesus was saying, you guys are depending only on yourself. Where was the sense of dependence on God that was needed in that moment? They relied on their own capacity. How many of y'all have ever tried to do that? Doesn't work to heal the child. And when you rely upon self and not on God, nothing will happen. There are things in our lives that can hinder us from maxing out our true authority and power. Things such as pride, saying, I got this or I can do it in my own strength. That can block us from the release of the authority of God in our lives. Scripture is clear. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. If you think you can do it better than God, I'm just going to be honest with you, you are full of pride. Because you cannot do it better than God. You cannot do it bigger than God. Rebellion will hamper the power of God in our lives every single time. Fear has the same effect. Unbelief can compromise the release of God's power in us. Authority is an absolute that we have in Christ, but power is relative. See, power related to our life posture. That's why my being set free, my restoration and living free is more than just about me. It's more than just about you. See, it's about others. It's about me being able to stand up here and minister to you in this season. 
It's about the lives that God wants me to be used in. My family, my friends, my circle, my team. So I feel strongly it's why I'm coaching this great group of young men. Just use me, God, for I am willing. When you turn your posture and your heart toward God, you're going to say, use me, more of you and less of me. See, I'm about seeing the kingdom of God advancing so that hell cannot. I'm about standing in the gap when needed. Because when there's an encounter between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, the kingdom of light, guess what, will win every single time. So the kingdom of darkness must try to compromise, right, the power of God in us through fear or unbelief, rebellion, and other sinful thoughts and emotions. Therefore, I am diligent, I am cognizant that I want to align my life with Christ to release power and authority through him and for him. Just get this right, y'all. Don't get it twisted. It's all about God. It's never about you. It's never about man. It's about God. It's about his word here on earth. And there's a difference between striving and aligning. By aligning, I mean bringing myself in alignment with God's truth, his word. And I said it last week, the alpha to the omega, it begins and ends in his word. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and I shall answer. See, I want to bring greater, my life into greater alignment with God and his truth so his power can be released in my life and through me. I get it. I know, I don't wonder, I don't doubt that he has given me the power that raised Jesus from the dead. And he's given that to every person in here through our salvation. Put you in select company, y'all. I mean, think about that. Through your salvation, that resides in you. Every day, in every moment, it never leaves. The Holy Spirit resides in us. As I said, the advocate that came. And through the Holy Spirit, that helper, we have all that we need for a life of godliness and what we need to walk in power and authority through Christ. What would it be like? Just imagine for a moment. What would it be like to see every believer that's in this room, every marriage that's in this room, every family, every church that's in this community that operate in the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit? Hell itself could not withstand it. It could not survive. Jesus gives his authority to us. Ephesians 1, it says, we've been given the power and authority of God out salvation. And I keep bringing salvation because we're going to do that later. See, when we dedicate our life to God, there is nothing that can stand in our way, nothing that can stand against us. Believe me when I say, today could be your day. If you've never received salvation, today could be the day to walk in that authority and power. It could also be the day that you begin to grasp the authority and power. Maybe today's the first time you've heard a message like this. Maybe you've walked as a victim for too long. Well, today we're going to have an opportunity to do that together and bring authority and power into this house. See, at the moment you and I receive Christ as our Savior, we are raised up and seated with Jesus at the right hand of the Father, which means the authority of God that is in Jesus is shared with us. We are joint heirs with Jesus. And that's something worth getting excited about, y'all. See, it makes me wonder why so many people consider themselves Christians. They live a defeated life. Do they just not know? Have they just not taken the time to get to know the Lord, the King, the Master? See, right now, the authority of God given to Jesus, which raised us from death, again, is ours. It's not exclusive to any one person in here. It's not exclusive to the guy that gets to stand up here and give a message. It's not exclusive to the guy that helps people park in the parking lot or greets people at the door. It's exclusive to the person that comes in church, laughs, sits in the back, never says a word, slides out the side door when it's over. It's exclusive to everybody that's in Christ. You ain't got to be rich. You ain't got to be pretty. You don't have to be perfect. But through your salvation, you have that power. Hmm. If I had better feet, sometimes I could run. He says, I'm standing right here. It's in me. As you sit right there, it's in you. And when enough of us understand that, when we grasp it, then hell itself will not be able to stand up against it, against the power and the glory of God. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. See, all of us have received that authority, but very few of us act in it. You see people walk around the same mountain time and time again. 
See, this is demonstrated in Jesus' earthly ministry, right? When he gave the disciples authority, Luke 9, 1 is the reference point here. He called his 12 cats together, his 12 disciples, not cats, guys, men. And he said, I want you to go out and do ministry. You've been following me long enough. Go on, get out, go do it yourselves. I'm going to break you all up two by two and we'll give you authority and power. I want you to drive out demons. I want you to heal the sick. I want you to proclaim the gospel for the kingdom. Can you imagine, right? Jesus is like, hey, all right, Olivia, Jan, you guys are going out together. There's a bunch of demons over there. You're going to go cast them out, right? They're probably thinking, yo, I'm just cool watching you do your thing, Jesus. You get to tag along, get in all the clubs. It's good, right? Oh, you were Jesus. Come on in. Normal table. I thought we were just going to watch a little bit. But Jesus, right, he gives them the authority and the power. They go out. And what do they do? They drive out the demons. They heal the sick. They proclaim the gospel for the kingdom. Same thing happens at the 72 in Luke 10. They gather together. Jesus goes through the same routine with them. And look at their response to being sent in his authority to cast out demons and heal the sick. Luke 10, 17 says the 72 returned with joy. They were elated. They said, Lord, the demons are subject to us in your name. That's power. That's authority. Jesus has left that for us. Jesus says to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. A song like that, right? Yeah. I can't sing, or I try. <laughs> every time they carried out a spiritual transaction, every time they made a declaration, every time they spoke out in faith, faith is big, Satan fell like lightning out of heaven. He goes on to say, Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. How much of the power of the enemy? What does all mean? It means all. Not just a little bit of the power of the enemy. God ain't going to leave you out in the cold. He's going to let you have the authority, let you have the power to speak. You see, I'm repetitive today in that. And I've said this before. When you read Scripture, you'll see how repetitive Jesus was as a teacher. Why does he do that? Because he wants you to get it. Our football players can tell you how many times we run spear zip 27 sweep. It's a lot in practice. Why do we do that? Fundamentally, we want them to know it. It's the same way. It's the same, why. it's the same reason Jesus preaches like that in Scripture. It's the same reason I keep talking about the same thing over and over because I want it to go from here to here. I want you to know it. You see, when Jesus left us on earth, he said this, all authority has been given to me and now I'm commissioning you. You go out and you make disciples just as I did. All that I did, all that I taught you, you do the exact same things. You teach others the exact same ways. Do not be deceived today, guys, into thinking that you don't have the authority and the power to do big things for the kingdom. There are going to be people that line up and tell you, hey, you can't do that anymore. I don't believe that because it was meant to continue on. Jesus modeled it for us. He worked with a group of men who would start the same type of ministry throughout the church that would go on for century after century after century, leading right here today with you sitting in these seats. That has not changed. Authority and power is given all throughout Scripture. Matthew 16, 19, Jesus gives the keys to the kingdom to Peter. The keys refer to authority. We see the exact same thing in Matthew 18 as well. In James 5, 17 through 19, it says, Elijah was a man just like us, just like me, just like you. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And guess what? It did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced crops. In the Bible, it's full of people just like us, that walked through the same things, had the same things happen to them, had loss, had grief, had gain, everything under the sun, just like us. At salvation, we receive this authority. And some in this room have received authority or, see, or received salvation already. Do not operate fully in that power and authority. And if I asked you to be real and raise your hand right now, my guess would be a lot of hands would go up. Because I know that in my life, I walked a long time not knowing it. In my life, when I read scripture, I read it as if I was hearing a field mouse instead of the mighty king, the lion of Judah. See, when you get real with yourself, when you say, man, I want that, then you'll have that. If you want to, you will. But you can't just give it lip service. It's an act. It's a turn. It's a hot heart posture. And for some, it's salvation. And then a walk with the Lord. You see, what we need to get hold of today, what we need revelation of today, is that we receive the authority and the power of Jesus. 
salvation. Like you've had it. Some of y'all might have been baptized, saved when you were 10 years old. You might be 50. You might be 60. Your whole life, you walk with that power, and you're just kind of going through the motions and hoping you make it from day to day. It does not have to be like that. You see, we don't have to strive for it. We don't have to beg for it. We don't have to fight for it. It's been given to us. We all have been given the exact same authority and power in Christ, once again, via our salvation. You see, there are different gifts, different measure of gifts that we all have in, in the kingdom, but we all have the same authority and power, okay? It's found with our union with Jesus. You see, we don't just have authority and power just because. It's a power and authority we have for the purpose of building the kingdom, of knocking down walls and strongholds in our life, breaking generational curses, standing in the gap for others in need. It is ministering the truth of the gospel, pouring into others, serving the broken, being the true hands and feet, standing up when you've been laying down. The authority and power we have is over everything in our life, y'all. When your kids walk out the door, stop fearing. Know they belong to, the, to God above. It's crazy. People say to me all the time, man, your daughter is 3,000 miles away from you. Yes, she is. But she don't belong to me. She belongs to the king. And it's when you begin to take your hands off things like that in your life. It's when you begin to take them off that you realize the authority and the power that you have to speak and you see it happen. You know, Paul in Scripture is always inserting the phrase, the head over every power and authority. See, he never wanted anybody to stray, to go too far from the reality of the mission that we're on. So as we set ourselves free, our desire should be that we want to be used by God to help set others free. We want to help them come into the kingdom. We want to help them experience the power of God, the authority of God. That's what it's all about. Think about if you wake up tomorrow morning and you just proclaim that authority and power over your life because of salvation and you start speaking life into yourself, into your family, into your job, into your finances, into the people that you talk to, watch how quickly those things begin to change. See, having godly power and authority is about being equipped for a purpose. See, I want to be used for the fullness of God. So I can be used in a greater way for him and his kingdom to advance the gospel, to spread the good news so that nobody has to walk out of this life or walk out this life without a relationship with Jesus. The church needs to throw off the shackles of thinking, how can Jesus benefit me? Rather, the motivation for our relationship with Jesus should be to glorify him, to enjoy his fellowship and advance his kingdom in his name and his power and glory. See, if it was just about being better, I can tell you right now, he should have taken me to heaven the minute I was saved. See, he left me, he left you on earth for the same reason the Father sent him to earth. And if we cannot live for something larger than ourselves, what meaning and purpose do we really have? See, there are members of my team, I mentioned them here this morning, it's never about the I with them. It's about the we. We play for one another. The coaches that I coach with, we coach for one another. We support one another in all things. We embrace the successes together. Walk through the defeats together. It's about a greater purpose. The power and authority is not just for you, but it's to be used for others. Now, I'd like you to do one more thing for me today. We're going to close soon. If you can, I know this puts people out their comfort zone, and that's part of what I do best. But I do feel led to ask this congregation to come down front, to gather at the altar, and if you could start playing some music, if you would, softly in the background, to come and access what God has for you today. If you've been a Christian for a long time but still do not walk with that godly authority you want and desire, I want you to come. You see, there are people in this room that have walked alone in Christ. They've isolated themselves on an island. 
They're unable to tap into the power of authority. So as you come down, when you arrive at the altar, I want you to grab a hand. I want you to link arms. I want you to stand with one another. I want you to stand together. I want you to stand as a body united in the power and the authority that God has given you. So that when you leave here today, there will no longer be any doubt about who you are in Christ. You will no longer wonder if you can move mountains in his name. That the power and the authority you have in Christ is absolute and it is unconquerable. And as you guys come forward, you guys can press in. There's more people coming. You can come closer to the altar. If you do not yet know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we're going to say a salvation prayer. We're going to get you right today. And as you're down here, you can just begin to pray out for that godly power, that godly authority that is rightfully yours through salvation. That nobody can take it from you. Just begin to pray out. Thank the Lord for all that he has done. For all the power, all the authority, all the godly influence. And if you feel an unction and you don't come, be cautious that you have pride in your life. That says, I don't need this. I have this. And if there's those in this room who need salvation, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm just going to ask as a body of Christ that are in here today that you just repeat this after me. With heads bowed and eyes closed, please repeat this. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins and surrender my life. Wash me clean. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That he died on the cross for my sins and rose again on the third day for my victory. I believe that in my heart and make confession with my mouth that Jesus is my Savior and Lord. Amen. We're going to pray again over this congregation, Father God. So go ahead and just stay in a posture of prayer. I'm going to pray over you guys, pray over this service. Father, I thank you that based on your word, you have given us as the believer, the born again children of you, God, power and authority here on this earth. I thank you, Lord. You came not only to save us, but you also came to give us power and authority. Jesus, I thank you that you died for our freedom and that you desire that we live a life of abundance in every area of our lives, Lord. I declare, Lord, today that you are God and we will praise you and we will exalt your name on high. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have defeated our enemy for us and that he is now a defeated foe and that you have raised us up together, Father, with you and have made us sit with you in the heavenly places far above the darkness and the principalities of this world. You, Lord, have made us more than overcomers. Thank you, Father, for loving us and for all your loving kindness toward those that love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Give God a shout and a clap. If today was your day of salvation, find an elder, find somebody, let them love on you a little bit. We got a gift for y'all. God bless each and every one of you, man. Love you guys. See ya.